It hasn't been here for a little while, three years in the US and 35 years in Canada. But the Toyota Land Cruiser is back in North America and on this next Novak Report, I'm gonna take a look at it, so stick around. The Land Cruiser nameplate is the longest running nameplate in Toyota history. It goes all the way back to 1958. It's also sold all over the world. So what that probably means is what Land Cruiser means to you would probably mean something different to somebody in another part of the world. I mean, it even the Prado name is part of Land Cruiser. Some people have the Land Cruiser Prado, some just a Prado or just a Land Cruiser. So it's kind of confusing to understand what it is that I'm driving here. I did mention off the top that here in Canada, we haven't seen a Land Cruiser on dealer lots available since 1989, when the old 60 series was the last sold here in Canada as new. In the United States, the follow-up, the 200 series, uh, was sold as a large, you know, sort of a Sequoia type SUV. If you look at the, you know, the Lexus LX of old, they probably have the closest representation to it today, but that was sold in the US until 2001 and it's been discontinued since. So what we're looking at now, depending on where you are in the world, here in North America, this new version, which is the 10th generation, is technically what they would call the 250 series, but we're calling it just the Land Cruiser here in Canada and the US. Some areas of the world are calling it the 250 Land Cruiser, some are the Land Cruiser Prado. Again, it, it, it all depends, but it's the latest version. Throughout the nameplate's history, no matter whether it was the 40, 60, 200 series, no matter it was a Prado, wherever it's sold in the world, two-door, long wheelbase, whatever, Land Cruiser as a name itself has always had a reputation for being a very durable, capable type of SUV. And while this new generation here has the same sort of chops, they're still marketing and has this capable vehicle that can go on great adventures, the reality is, as we see with so many other vehicles in North America marketed the same way, most people will not use this vehicle as it is capable of being used. We will not see it on off-roading trails for most families. This is more than likely going to be that type of daily driver, that family hauler, that you're probably more likely to see it trying to find a parking spot at a suburban power center with a Costco than you will on some great wilderness trail. So, I mean, that's just the reality. Uh, we tend to buy vehicles that we don't need. We just like largely because of how they're marketed and how the brand attachment is all about, you know, the, the capable one day I might go out into the wilderness. So if you're thinking about this in terms of will it fit my daily needs? I mean, sure, it's capable, but how is it in terms of comfortable? And for that, I think despite it still being a truck design, a body on frame, and it drives like a truck, the handling is like a truck too. And you know, it's tall, it's, it's big. So you're gonna have some body roll in corners and you're gonna see the steering not being quite as light and nimble as you might have on a, on a more typical type of family hauler SUV. Uh, it's still comfortable. There's plenty of headroom, there's lots of space. There's plenty of cargo space. The amenities, depending upon the trim level in terms of comfort and creatures, as a daily driver in terms of functionality and, and comfort, I mean, that's gonna do quite well also. And then maybe on that one rare occasion, you might take it to a cottage road and there might be a pothole and you go, oh, well, I certainly glad I picked this vehicle because of this pothole, I'm capable. So if you're gonna come up with an all new version of the Land Cruiser, you might as well include an all new powertrain as well. And in that case, all versions of this new Land Cruiser are powered by the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder iForce Max hybrid engine. It puts out 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque. It is matted to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now we called it the iForce hybrid and Actually, in Toyota's promotional materials, they call it an electrified uh, powertrain. And while all hybrids do have electrification in it and that there is an electric motor as part of this drive system, I don't really like calling it electrified because this is more about power than it is about efficiency. And this is not the Toyota hybrid drive system. It's not a parallel system. The, the motor and the, uh, and the engine are connected along the same drive shaft. So what the motor basically does is it really is about enhancing 
the, the gas engine. It, it provides more power. There are moments where you will drive in battery only, but it's not the same as you would with the typical Toyota hybrid drive system. So even though it is a hybrid system and it does produce a sufficient amount of power, it's really not about efficiency per se. With respect to efficiency, you're looking at a posted combined rating of 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That's 23 US miles per gallon. I mean, is this efficient to begin with, with a hybrid powertrain system, even though it's not about efficiency? I mean, this is a uh, on a truck platform. The Land Cruiser is built on Toyota's universal GAF truck platform. It's the same platform that we see the Lexus GX on or the uh, Tacoma, the Tundra. I believe the new 4Runner is using the same platform as well. So this is a body on frame you would typically expect to have um, higher uh, fuel numbers as opposed to something that's a unibody. So I guess comparatively speaking, the numbers that we see posted here are okay. Um, whether you'll get that all the time is something that depends on a whole host of factors. If you are indeed looking to get into a Land Cruiser, dealers are now stocking up with 2025 models and there will be three trim levels available in both Canada and the US. The entry-level Land Cruiser 1958 trim features round LED headlamps and a heritage grille with Toyota spelled out in front. Also included among the features are 7-inch multi-information display, 18-inch alloy wheels, and fabric upholstery. The mid-level Land Cruiser trim introduces more modern styling and additional features designed for off-roading. This model builds on the 1958 grade and adds rectangular LED headlamps, heated exterior mirrors, a power tilting sliding moonroof, a power back door, plus a 12.3 inch touchscreen display and 12.3 inch full digital gauges. You now get a wireless charging dock for smartphones, the multi-terrain monitor and multi-terrain select systems, and a stabilizer disconnect mechanism that increases suspension flex at the push of a button. At the top of the trim line is the Land Cruiser Premium Package, which enhances the Land Cruiser grade with 20-inch alloy wheels, steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, a center console cooler box, leather upholstery, power adjustable front row seats, driver seat memory system, and a digital rear view mirror among other upgrades. What is no longer available is the Land Cruiser First Edition, which was a limited run edition and my test unit was one of only 290 available in Canada. Pricing for the 2025 Land Cruiser models in both Canadian and US dollars are listed here. I think this new Land Cruiser is going to be successful again in North America. But what do you think? Let me know by leaving a comment. And if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it with others as well. If you're not subscribed to the Novak Report, please consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, make sure you've rung the bell so that you get notified of every time I upload something new. That's it for now at this look at the all new Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching.